Is it worth throwing away your reputation to help those in need? Come join me and we'll find out. Welcome Mere Mortals to another book review and today I have for you Ruined City by Neville Shute. This book was published in 1938 and it is set during the time that it was actually published. So bleak, desperate, dark, dismal England during the 1930s depression. Not a great place to be. It tells the fictional tale of Henry Warren. So Henry is a banker in the financial London scene who goes through some traumatic events and basically decides he needs to save the destitute town of Sharples. The story itself is narrated by the main character, Henry Warren, and is essentially, I, I guess, a, a book about finding purpose and meaning. He himself is going through a collapsing marriage. His wife is cheating on him with other people. And although he is rich, he is a workaholic in the London area. So he is just busy, busy, busy working at his bank. And through some fortuitous circumstances, he gets his life saved by these kind-hearted people in this town of Sharples. Now, Sharples used to have a shipyard, it used to have a mine, a rolling mill, and was once a, a, there was once a period of great activity but when he goes there, everything is dark, depressed. The people are being um, eaten away essentially by their own bodies from malnutrition through hunger. And so he essentially decides, hey, I need to help this town out, help these people out and find purpose and meaning through doing that. And he will do it through legitimate or most likely in this case, illegitimate means. The plot of the book then follows him trying to bring work back to this area and in particular ships. So he has contacts in Latvia in a foreign country where he himself has to go. He has to do some very dodgy things, bribing people, under, doing underhanded stuff. And not only there in a very real sense of handing out bribes, but also back in his own country through dodgy financing, risking his reputation to essentially help other people finance these deals. So onto the themes of the book and I guess the Great Depression is definitely one of them, which is real hard times. Funnily enough, just reading his descriptions of the of the town itself, you get a feeling for just using the adjectives that he describes, what it was like then. So there was things like dreary, despondent, washed up corpse, rusted, bleak, just this atmosphere is created of this terrible, terrible place to be living in. The people of the town would also reflect what was going on with the town and it's hard to determine whether the material prosperity went first or the heart of the people went first or what it was but it was this feedback loop of people being now malnutrition, now malnourished, not being able to get food, becoming despondent, that meaning they then can't have the energy to find work, to do all these things. So it's sort of this continually cascading spiral downwards into the pit of a depression. What I actually really liked about this book was it does give you a real feel for what the depression was like. And you can even see this in terms of GDP and put some numbers in, into it. So for comparison, during that time from 1929 to we'll just say like 1932, 1933, a period of three or four years, the world GDP declined by 26.7%. Now, if you compare that to the recent uh, recession in 2008, the global GDP went down by 5.1% over a period of about 18 months. So there is just this huge difference in imagining everything getting wiped out when you already are at a level where you don't have the capacity for things to wipe you out. It's very different to be in a state where 20, you lose 25% of, let's just say, your belongings when you know, if, if you're living in the subsistence poverty level, that's a huge deal. That's maybe your method of cooking just gone out the window. Whereas if you're in a relatively wealthy country, let's just say 25% of your, your possessions are gone, that might be your car and some of your clothes and stuff, but you're still going to be able to survive. You won't have be on that thin razor edge of, of actually just trying to live. The other theme of the book is reputation. And I would say this is opinions, but that are context dependent. So it's quite funny to see how his reputation changes throughout the book. Initially, he's this not glamorous, but a very well-respected financier, a banker of well-renowned, of good repute. People will trust him with their money. And he works very hard and diligently to ensure that trust remains. As the book 
continues on though, we see how he's made this decision to help these other people. So he's going to have to start sacrificing that reputation to get things done. He needs to start giving out bribes. He needs to start lying to the public through the prospectus, through the release of documents, through financial statements, putting his own reputation on the line in essence. And as we see in the book, this culminates in quite a negative event for him. It did get me thinking, I guess, about how we see reputation nowadays as well and whether it is a commodity in a sense in which you can trade it, replace it and use it to either a greater effect or a smaller, more focused, intense effect. And in the book, we see he gets rid of this reputation he has for being a banker. He, in the end, he can no longer return to the banking scene. But he gains the respect, the enormous gratitude and respect of a very small town and a very few select people. And so it does get you thinking, hmm, maybe reputation can be used in these ways and you, it should sort of be seen as a commodity. If I use my reputation in X manner, I can get this X result and affect these people. A very interesting thing to think about nowadays in the age of so social media, and you're definitely seeing this, where people are going onto Instagram, creating a following, and then I suppose using their reputation for dollars, you can say, I have X amount of reputation. And if I put in advertising and advertise these things, I'll get out X dollars. And you don't always have to do that for a commodity sense. You could say, I'll use my reputation to gain happiness from other people or a deeper respect or whatever it is, a favor. It's just interesting to think about. And this book really does show hey, reputation actually matters. Some of my personal observations of the book, it is absolutely hilarious how different our views change over time. So a couple of things that were very notable in this book. One was war. It was actually sort of seen as a good thing. If the, another war came around, that means they'd get jobs. That means there'd be food. That means there would be economic activity. Nowadays, we look at war and it's like, geez, we don't want any part of that. Like, no thanks. Another one was him describing what a prosperous city looks like is just mm, mint because essentially he was saying right at the end of the book, the city is prosperous. They've got the mills starting to work again, the shipyards in full swing. And he's describing how the thick smog of air covers the city, the hustle bustle of activity, the grime is returning because the mud on the streets is, is coming back because people are moving in and out. And it's essentially describing what we would now say as a, a third world city where it's, yeah, there's smog all in the air. There's grime and dirt in the streets. People are hustling and bustling about with needless activity. It's just <laughs> so crazy to look at that and be like, you know what? Nowadays, that's probably not a good thing. So in summary, it's an uplifting story about a man who becomes a hero, an individual who manages to make a difference. It's set in a very bleak, dark, despondent time. But for me, it actually wasn't that evocative emotionally. I didn't read this and, you know, feel the horror in my heart and empathize with these people. It was almost described in an unemotional way, uh, almost as you would expect from, I suppose, the main character in a business-like sense. This town has this problem. It would take X amount of money to fix it. I have X amount of money or can garner X amount of money. So... In that sense, it doesn't really draw you deep into the story. And me personally, I, I wasn't, I found it a little bit bland. I found it more like the fantasy of a banker, probably any banker anywhere at any time who wants to be a hero as it's just a little bit unrealistic, a little bit eh, not, not that great. So in total, I'm giving the book a five and a half out of 10. I, I really don't think I'm gonna remember this that deeply. Uh, that being said, I, it was a, a quick, nice, easy read to get through. And I did get a greater appreciation what the feeling tone of, of being in the 1930s depression in a small England town would be like. My pragmatic takeaway from it, well, it's not so much pragmatic, but man, do we have it easy. It's even if uh, we go through a depression now or a recession, it's just so it's we're such at a different level, at least in the West here where I am in Australia that it's it's uncomparable in saying, and I really hope that we never have to go back to a time like that um, for myself. And then, you know, as the world prospers as a whole for other people.
So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this book. Have you read any of the other works of Neville Shute? And if so, what do you think of them? Would you have a recommendation to, to put in the in below for me to, to understand more? Uh, other than that, if you can leave all the, all the good things, uh, you know, subscribe, give a like, a comment, all that stuff, I, I really do appreciate it. And I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Kyron out.